to the Practical Prophetic, where prophetic ministry is made practical. I'm Beth Wingate, I'm your host, and welcome to the podcast. On our podcast today, we are going to talk about I See Dead People. If you're familiar with the 1999 movie, The Sixth Sense, which was a sensation back in the day. I remember when that movie came out. It was all the talk. It had a huge plot twist. It was a psychological thriller. I actually saw it a couple of years later uh, when it came out on television or whatever. But um, it was a very interesting movie. A lot of clues and psychology. And then it has a huge plot twist at the end. And uh, it's it was really a fascinating movie by M. Night Shyamalan. And so he's a, an Indian guy who uh, from India <laughs> who did the movie and is just brilliant. Just a brilliant movie. I've referenced this movie before in a podcast that we did, I think, last year called The Sixth Sense. And I took that one in a little bit different direction. But today I want to talk about the perception of I see dead people. And really, this is a message about prophetic discernment, prophetic perception, and about prophetic evangelism. So, but I'm going to kind of use this movie, uh, the plot of this movie, as a teaching aid or an analogy so that you can sort of reference this. And uh, I don't remember if the movie, you know, was clean or not because I saw it on television, but I I think it was pretty, pretty clean from what I could remember. It's a little grisly, a little dark in places, but it's basically just a psychological thriller about a little boy and a man who's a child psychologist and, uh, and it's very interesting. And, and the big sort of climactic moment, the first one of the movie, is when the little boy tells the guy that he sees dead people. And a plot twist at the very end, you figure out, and there was all these clues right in front of you. In fact, the movie never really tried to hide this, but it told you at the end that the pr- uh, protagonist was actually dead himself and did not know it. Uh, spoiler alert. But uh, also... This week, actually, I was thumbing through a little video clips, you know, how they'll do on your phone, and I came across something really interesting, and it was uh, three people dressed in black, three people dressed in white, and uh, there was two basketballs, and they were kind of in a circle, and they were bouncing and passing the balls to one another. Now, the people dressed in black only passed the balls to each other and the people dressed in white only passed the balls to each other and the person came on the screen and said I want you to pay really close attention to the people dressed in white and count how many times they pass the ball to each other of course while this is happening the people in black and the people in white are all jumbled up and moving around so you really have to pay attention and concentrate Well, at the end of it, he tells you, hey, they passed the ball 15 times, but he says that's not actually the real test. The real test has to do with perception. And did you even notice that a guy dressed up in a gorilla suit walked through the whole screen? In fact, he even stops in the middle and like pounds on his chest and you probably didn't even see it. And then when you go back and play the video back, You clearly see, I mean, the gorilla suit is in all black, so it was, but it was plain, and you were not paying attention because you were only counting the people dressed in white passing this basketball. Well, that got me thinking, and I'm always trying to bring you something interesting to help remember a lesson, and so it got me thinking about perception. Sometimes we miss the most obvious things because we only see what we want to see. And by the way, this is how the media often works. Uh, Look over here. Don't look over here. You know, but um, as Christians, as prophetic people, and I hope that if you've been listening to this podcast long enough, that you're starting to get a grasp of the prophetic. Now, let me back up real quick and give us the definition of prophetic based on the Hebrew word in your King James Bible that is often translated as prophetic in related terms. That word basically just means to be inspired of the Holy Spirit. And the most primary way we do that is through God's Word. 
And another way we can do that is God will actually impress upon us through our five senses. So that's the prophetic. And if you go back and listen to our episodes on prophetic evangelism, really, this is basically going to tie into that. So I'm, I'm watching this little video of the people with the basketball, and it got me thinking about perception. And I believe this is like the 20, you know, something anniversary of that, almost the 25th anniversary of that movie. And so it really got me uh, thinking about what we pay attention to. So uh, let me uh, sort of now take us in a different direction. We had a situation occur. I volunteer with our city and we were having some discussions. There was some uh, teenagers at the park who had uh, taken on the persona of being uh, what it's called furries, where they pretend that they're animals or they believe that they identify as a cat or a dog or whatever. And um, at first, that seems harmless enough. You know, okay, that's, you know, peculiar, but harmless. But uh, actually, it was not harmless because uh, they were, you know, harassing people and, and doing things they shouldn't have been done that were illegal in the park. And it caused a big uproar in our town. And I think this is also because of TikTok and social media contagion, sort of something that's spreading all over with young people who uh, maybe lack identity. And so uh, people had strong emotions about this on Facebook and, you know, oh, you know, treat them like an animal, put them outside or put them in a pen or whatever, you know, people were saying all kind of things. And uh, someone showed me a video clip. And obviously, the, these kids that have taken on this, this mentality are behaving like animals. And uh, people were being, some people were being very harsh and mean with them. And, you know, whatever. And so it got me thinking about that, though. I also was uh, drawn to attention of someone I know, their, um, their, Facebook, they dressed up very gothic and kind of scary and, you know, the black fingernails and heavy eyeliner and and just that whole persona. And and people have a strong reaction sometimes to that where they'll show them uh, disdain because it's basically uh, social conditioning. You know, hey, you don't fit into society, so I'm going to shun you. And that's, you know, that's just human behavior. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. So I was thinking about all of these things, and a part of me, my heart, as a Christian, as a believer, immediately went out to these kids on one level. You know, what, what are they missing that they need? Who, who hasn't given them the love and direction that they need? And, and so I had, on one hand, a heart for these kids. Now, when I found out they were harassing people and all, I was like, well, <laughs> you know, that part's not okay. So anyway, so I was thinking about these things, thinking about this movie, and it got me thinking about one of the big plot twists in the movie is when the little boy tells the guy who doesn't know he's dead, he says, I see dead people, which should have been a huge clue. And like at the end of the movie, you're like, oh my goodness, they told me it was right in front of me the whole time and I missed it because I wasn't paying attention to this. I was looking at this. And so It got me thinking about how we, as prophetic believers, we can see dead people, people who don't even know they're dead, but we can perceive it. We can see it. We're like that little boy. We see dead people. I see people who are walking around all the time, and they don't even know they're dead. Now, let me give us our foundation scripture and take us where I want to take us with that in mind. In Ephesians 2, 1, it says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. By the way, you and I used to be dead too. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 2 says, Wherein time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. By the way, this phenomenon with the furries and all that, it may seem harmless enough, but I'm telling you, there's a spirit behind that that's attacking identity, and it wants to keep dead people dead. Ephesians 2, 3, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, 
hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and he hath raised us up together, and has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness, and I could go on and on. That just goes on. If you want to spend a little time in Ephesians chapter 2, what a wonderful chapter in your Bible. Listen, we were dead in our sins. We were dead men walking and didn't know it. And when the Holy Spirit revealed our need for a Savior, we came to the realization that we were dead and didn't know it. But there's resurrection power to help you become born again. Oh, what a glorious resurrection. So this is where I want to sort of take our podcast today is about changing our perception. Really, this is just a continuation of prophetic evangelism. You know, when you see people acting strangely or grappling for their identity, or maybe they are uh, very dark in in their their hobbies and habits and things they like, maybe it's because they're dead and they don't even know know it. But you know what? You are carrying around with you, on the inside of you, access to his resurrection power that can raise them from the dead spiritually so that they can become born again. Oh, what a glorious gift. I was listening also this week, or I read that uh, Russell Brand, he was sort of known as this really you know, liberal uh, comedian who was edgy and just, you know, way out there. Well, he's on this journey and he announced this week that he's getting baptized, that he has come to the Lord and he has become born again. What a wonderful thing to witness. And, And he's recognizing that he was dead and didn't even know it. I want to share a little story. So uh, recently I was speaking to someone who had recently become born again, and they were telling, uh, you know, this group that I was with uh, how they were basically angry at God and uh, misplaced that anger in acting out. And so they embraced really dark things. In fact, they became so riddled with anxiety and depression that they had planned out their suicide. In fact, going as far as to making arrangements for their family, for their children. Oh, my heart was just crushed when I heard this, and I'm so thankful that they turned to the Lord. They were drawn to come into the church. But you know what? Not many people in a state of desperation will grace the doors of a church. That's why it's so important that you and I go ye into all the world to share the good news. You know, we can't passively wait for people to come in off the street to our church. Now, when they do, we better present them with this opportunity. But we are called to go into the world. You know, the pastor can't go to everybody. Your your ministers on staff at your church can't go to your workplace. They can't go to your school. They can't go to your neighborhood all the time. That's why we have to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Go back and listen to our message on the, on the Great Commission. We have a mission. We must be mission focused. You need to recognize when you see dead people who don't know they're even dead. And that's our job. Let me give us some more scripture. Let's go to Ephesians 5.14. It says, Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Listen, they're walking in darkness. They're dead men walking because they don't have the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And here you are, full of light, full of life, born again. You must share that with people who are walking in darkness. And, you know, I've I've heard so much about how we can do that. The method to me is not really that important. Whatever is effective, then do that. But share your faith. I, I cannot impress upon you enough how important it is to share your faith with people. In 1 Peter 1, 3, and 4, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy 
hath begotten us again unto lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Listen, there is resurrection power in the Word of God that can bring spiritually dead people to spiritual life, to give them eternal life and hope, to bring life to a dead situation that's going on in your life, to bring hope to the hopeless. Dead people walking who don't even know they're dead. And so we have to share the good news with people. You know, it's one thing to see it, just like the little boy in the movie. All he did was see it. But I'm here to tell you, we have to go a step further. Once you identify that someone is lost, then you have an obligation as a believer. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the Great Commission, that this is our, this is our commandment. A commission means a commandment that we share our faith. That is what makes Christianity unique is that we proselytize, we evangelize, we share our faith. And so this is something I'm going to implore you to do. This is something you need to be doing on a regular basis. In John 10, 10, it says that the thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Listen, if you're someone or you know someone who's walking around spiritually dead, they do not have abundant life. There's no way they can have peace and contentment in their heart. I don't care what they're telling you. (laughs) Abundant life only comes through salvation and through Jesus Christ as a son and daughter of the King. And so I really, this is really just a podcast today. It's going to be a little shorter than usual, a little more to the point. I'm just using this movie as a guide, as an example. It was a unique piece of entertainment, but it really drove home a point. And that's why it won, I think, like six or seven Oscar awards, because it was really uh, right before the internet really took hold. And this movie Really, I can't describe to you the impact it had. I remember, uh, you know, I was uh, newly married, kind of young, and I remember people talking about this movie, and it just really was like a word of mouth kind of thing because it was just so groundbreaking because all of the clues were there. In fact, the very opening scene of the movie, uh, the, the lead actor is shot, played by Bruce Willis, and you see that he's dead, but Then the movie jumps forward, and you would just assume that he lived, and not until the end of the movie do you actually find out he was dead, and there was these clues all along that you missed because you assumed he was alive. Uh, Like, for example, there's one scene where he has dinner with his wife, but he's late, and the wife is kind of uh, ignoring him, and you think it's because he's late, but actually it's because she can't see him because he's dead. Only the little boy can see the dead people. And so that's just like people in your life. You know, there are people who are ignoring dead people around them, Christians who are ignoring dead people around them, because they choose not to see that they are dead, dead in their sins, so to speak. Are you one of the, are you like the wife at the table who you're ignoring what is right in front of you? because you choose not to see. I want to be like the little boy in the movie. I want to be someone that has that perception, that can see beyond what people are showing me on the outside. When these teenagers dress up or have, you know, people have identity confusion, listen, have compassion and mercy on them. They are lost. They are searching for identity. And I'm telling you, identity is only found one place. And that is in Christ. Oh my goodness, we could just go off on a tangent right there. But you need to know who you are and whose you are. Because that gives us security about our identity and about who we are. We are children of the Most High God. And everything flows out of that. 
And so I want to share that with people who are walking around confused. Now, I certainly, you know, think there's limitations to everything. You have to keep everything in balance. There are some people that have such a big bleeding heart that they will love people in a way that condones their behavior. And then over here, you have people who are very judgmental and uh, they show disdain to people who don't, you know, conform to whatever they think is normal and they'll shun them that's one human response we need to fall somewhere in the middle we need to walk in balance yes you need to stand on the word of god and say this is right and this is wrong but we also need to balance that with the love of christ and we need to recognize that we should have zero expectations about holiness from people who are lost and walking around dead in their sin so yes you do have to have compassion coupled with righteousness. Now, we have to balance that out all the time, of course, and I have zero expectations from people who are walking around dead. Just like in that movie, that movie is just a wonderful example because it shows you just like the little basketball clip where the people, uh, you know, you were looking at only the people passing the ball and you missed, you know, this little guy dressed up that was plain as day right in front of you because you weren't paying attention. So this podcast today really is about getting you to pay attention, to shift your perception so that you can see what others do not see that is right in front of you. I mean, plain as day. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And so once I watched the video with the uh, the people passing the basketball, it was very easy then uh, to see, you know, the guy dressed up walk right through the middle of the of them passing the basketball. Well, once you know that the character was dead the whole time, when you go back and watch that movie, you see all kinds of clues that they were putting right in front of your face that you missed. Well, it's just like that with prophetic perception. Once you recognize that there are people walking around dead in their sin, it's very easy to see. So I'll leave us with this. As you go about your week, pay attention to what others do not see. Look for the clues. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes and notice the people who are spiritually dead and don't know it walking amongst you. And I ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to guide and lead you to share God's love with these people, whether you're planting a seed, whether you're doing an act of kindness, or whether you're asking them straight up if they want to be born again. Maybe you invite them to church, whatever level you're okay with. Maybe you hand them a scripture, but be led of the Holy Spirit. You know, in a lot of ways in that movie, the little boy is kind of like the Holy Spirit. He was trying to help the man understand that he was dead. And so allow the Holy Spirit to to show you the dead people walking and to, and to help you bring them the gift of life, which is the gift of Jesus Christ, who is full of resurrection power. I hope this podcast blessed and encouraged you today. Have a blessed day. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll be informed next time I post. Thank you again and have a blessed day.